What you guys got another video here for you. You need this app for Windows 11 or even Windows 10. If you're one of these people that doesn't like storage sense on Windows 11 and you want to replace it, then I'm going to show you what you can do here. So we have storage sense here running on our PC automatically, as you can see right here. And if it's something that you don't want to use because of uh, privacy concerns, if the information is being sent back to Microsoft, then you need to disable it. And we're going to be using something else called bleach bit. And I'll show you how to set this up to be able to run automatically on windows. So first open up the group policy editor here, and you can do this in the registry. If you want to see a video on how to disable this in the registry, let me know in the comment section down below, but we're on windows 11 pro here. We're going to go into the group policy. And what we need to do here is go into the location that has storage sense uh, in there. And I think it's in the system settings, not actually Windows components. So let's go back up to the list and go above it to system. And inside system, we should see the storage sense area right here. So what we're going to do is click on storage sense. So on the right hand pane here, we should see allow storage sense. Double click on this one here and this will open up the box. From here, we need to disable. So if we disable storage sense right here, and click apply and okay. Now we've got some other ones here about storage sense, but if you look here, it will tell you that we don't need to do any of these because if we have the allow storage sense disabled, these other ones are gonna be irrelevant to what we need to do. So let's go ahead and quickly check to make sure, yes, these are all the same. If we have allow storage sense disable, then this policy does not have any effect. So we don't need to touch this one either because this one is the same thing we've already disabled it let me just check the other ones to make sure that the other ones are saying the same thing i think they do but let me just go through here and check these double click and we can see here if we have it disabled it takes no effect so we don't need to worry about that this one right here same thing if we have allow storage since disabled this policy has no effect and there's one more here let me just quickly check Okay, so they're all done. So we don't need to worry about these ones. It's just the top two here that we need to take care of. So from there, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to quickly close this off. And what we're going to do is go to the settings pane, go back a bit and go back into storage sense. And you should see now that it's turned off. So what this has done is turned off storage sense and it's not going to be cleaning uh, and removing temporary internet files and temporary files off your system. You can see everything is turned off here. So that's good. So now that's turned off, what we're going to do is replace this with uh, Bleach Bit. Now, Bleach Bit is a free open source cleaning tool. And you can see here, this will clean your system and free up disk space. And this is a very good, powerful tool. It can be used on Windows and Linux as well. So if you're a Linux user, this is a really good tool if you're on a Linux operating system as well. But we're on a Windows system, so we're going to download this. And you can see here it is for Linux and Windows. And we're going to click on the Windows version right here. And what we'll do is we'll download, there is a portable version, but we're going to download the installer uh, for this particular system because we want to set up our system so it can clean automatically. So I don't think there's any videos on YouTube about how to set this up. So I wanted to go ahead and create this one for you. So let's go ahead and quickly install bleach bit now use bleach bit myself on my own system because i think it's a much better option than any of the other available options out there like uh, c cleaner and things like that so let's go ahead and finish this off and we can click on the run bleach bit here and once bleach bit opens it looks a little bit uh, basic but you can download uh, you know the community uh, settings which will give you much more options for cleaning your system so let me go ahead and let that open up it does take a bit of time to populate on the first time but we're just going to let that do its thing and once we got this open we can then select our options available now i'm not going to go through the actual program itself because i have covered this before but you do have shred files shred folders and uh, wipe free space and a bunch of other stuff here inside your preferences here this is where you can download and update cleaners from the community and this will download a much more advanced cleaning option so i'm going to go ahead and do that you don't have to do this part if you don't want to but i'm going to do that also i'm going to put the overwrite contents of files to prevent recovery i definitely want to do that as well so we're going to do that there 
Now, you don't have to do the overwrite if you don't want to, but that's what I'm going to be setting mine up as. From here, you've got some whitelist drives and custom areas here, but we're not going to worry about any of that in this video. But you should now see a list. We need to close this off and reopen it, and this will give us a much more extensive uh, list for cleaning our PC. So let me go ahead and quickly close off bleach bit and then reopen it, and this will then go ahead and give us a much better list with the uh, WinApp uh, 2 Inny. So because this is where all of the extra bits are. So let me go ahead and quickly close that off and open it back up again. And this should give us a much more extensive list here. So there we go. Let me go down here. Now, the deep clean or deep scan section here on there, you want to be careful that you're not doing wiping free space and doing all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to do Internet Explorer here, Microsoft Edge, and things like that. If you don't see any other particular type of browser here, uh, that's because you don't have it installed on your PC. As soon as you install it, it will populate on here. It will do Discord. It will do a bunch of different stuff. So you can see here, I've got all of these check marked to wipe any sort of, uh, you know, junk files that are left behind, log files and things like that. So like I said, where you want to be careful is that you're making sure that you're not wiping the free space all the time because that does take a fair bit of time to erase all of that information passwords you may want to remove the check mark on your browsers for passwords and things like that if you don't want to keep putting your password in because it will erase all of the passwords from your browser so you may want to remove those check marks if you want to keep passwords and your signing information but here under the system section you'll see here that there is a wipe the free disk space if you have this check marked it will take a fair bit of time to run so i'm just going to remove that because i don't want to do that particular area uh, when I'm cleaning my system on a regular basis. So if you want it to run very quickly, remove those. Okay, under the preference areas here, you can see the overwrite, uh, the contents, so it prevents recovery. Again, this just does an extra couple of wipes. If you want to remove that check mark to make it even quicker, you can do. So let's go ahead and now what we can do is close off our actual program because we don't need this running. All we need to do now is set up our task uh, scheduler to actually tell it to run automatically so let's go ahead and open up the start button here and we need to do a search for task scheduler and what we'll do is we'll open this up and we'll take out we'll create our own basic task to tell it to run every single day or every week or whenever you want to set yours up so it should look something like this it's pretty straightforward. It does look a bit daunting, but it is pretty straightforward to set up. If we look here, these are our task areas, and we don't have anything set up here yet. But what we're going to do is create a basic task. So let's click on create a basic task, and we can then configure it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. Now, there is advanced tasks that you can set up, but we only need a basic one here. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to call this one, say, Bleach Bit. So we know what this task is called if we ever want to erase it or amend it later on. Give it a description. We're just going to call this automatic uh, cleaning or clean, whatever you want to call yours. It's just so I know exactly what this task is. If I forget about it some months later, I might want to go back in here, and remove it. Click next. And once we got here, this is where you can choose your daily cleaning, weekly cleaning, or monthly cleaning. Really, you only need to clean it every month, really. But I'm going to leave mine as daily but you can set this up for monthly if you want to. Click next, and now we need to give it a start date. Uh, so give it give it a date of the starting date when you want it to start to clean. And also we need to give it a time. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a different time here so it gives me time to configure this. And it will run shortly after I've just made this particular basic task. We can recur every one day if we want to. And if this was monthly, you would, uh, obviously having it recurring every month from here the action start a program that's exactly what we want to do click next and now we need to tell it what program we want it to start so let's go ahead and click browse and we can now browse to the location where the program is installed that's in our c drive and it's inside our programs uh, x86 folder right here so let's go in here and there it is bleach bit so go inside there and what we're looking for here is we're looking for the bleachbit underscore console.exe file. 
So we're going to select that one and click Open. And now we need to add some arguments. So we're going to go ahead and add these in. So from here, what we need to do is we need to do dash dash and we need to do clean and then space dash dash and uh, preset. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Now put space dash dash and then put preset in here. And that's it. Once we've done this, we can save this and this will tell it to run this program in console mode. Uh, and it will basically run in the background and you'll see it populate in a second. Now we can configure this a little bit further later on. If we want to double click on this and go through some of the settings, we can do by going to properties here and inside here, you'll now see this box popping up here and you can see run only when the user's logged on. You can change the configure for Windows 10 and there's some triggers here, which we just set up actions, uh, conditions and here you can mess around with the conditions a little bit later on if you want to and we have some settings on here as well but i think that's good enough now we've got a basic task ready to run so you can see here it's going to run every day and that is the time that it's going to run which we've got it set up here and it will continue to do this until we change it so i've got task uh, scheduler open here so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to allow this to run now it might not run exactly on the exact time you put it, it might be a slight delay of so many seconds and then it will run in the background. So make sure you set it for a time uh, when uh, you're not using a computer because otherwise it will just uh, disrupt what you're doing. So you want to do this if you leave your computer on later on at night when you're going to bed or something like that or when you're not so active on your computer. And you should see a black prompt screen popping up on the box in a minute and that will be the program running in console mode. And you can see right here, and there we go, it's running and it's cleaning the system and it's done. And once it's done, it will shut this off. Now, again, you don't have to clean just about everything. You can clean what you want. You can put the check marks into the box of the program of what you want to clean on a regular basis. And you can set up basic tasks to run daily for maybe just your browsing history. And you can have it set up another task to run monthly for a more deeper system clean if you wanted to you can set as many tasks inside here as you like and you can come in and amend these to whatever you like and you can deep disable them and delete them if you want to depending on how you want to go about uh, setting yours up again what i would do generally is set this up to do a full maintenance scan and clean a load of stuff once a month that's probably what i would do i wouldn't do that on a daily basis and some of the more basic stuff, like a lighter cleaning, I would just do on a daily basis. Now, of course, if you had Discord installed or any of these other applications, it will clean the cache and all the junk files inside there as well. So it's useful for that. So you can see you don't have to have all of these check mark. You can clean just exactly what you want to clean at what particular times you want to clean them. And you can see we already have say, uh, Microsoft Edge on there. If you don't use Edge and you use, say, for instance, uh, Google Chrome or Firefox or any of these other browsers, all you need to do is let me go ahead and quickly download uh, Google Chrome here and install this on here, and I'll show you it does populate on that program once we install it because I want to make sure that you understand that this, this will change when you put the programs on the computer. So it's only just detecting what's actually on the PC right now so if i quickly go through and install this browser you'll see it populate on um bleach bit and we'll be able to then configure it to clean uh, our browser or our program that we've just installed so let's have a quick look here now i've just quickly installed uh, the google chrome here we're going to run bleach bit again and once we open up bleach bit you'll see that uh, google chrome has now been populated in here and you can just put your check marks into whatever you want to clean here if you want to remove the password part, just in case you want to keep those, that's how you would set that up. And this will then just run in the background very quick and easy. And uh, this will be the same for any other program that you put on here. Now, remember, you don't have to set this up to do a secure erase every single time. Like, for instance, doing a secure delete to make sure those files are not recoverable. That might do some wear and tear on your drive. If you want to set that up without that feature, you can do. And it will just clean junk files out on a regular basis and it shouldn't do any harm to your ssd or hard drive it does work with hard drives and ssds anyway but that said my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk quick shout out to my youtube members i really do appreciate the support 
and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely weekend and thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.